Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're gonna to be putting together the ultimate iPod video, or uh, iPod Classic fifth generation, as it might better be known. Let's start with some quick background, and then we'll get into the good stuff. iPods have somehow been around for 20 years, which is absolutely insane, and from their release in 2001, Apple very quickly worked to make them smaller and more portable than ever before. But there was always a significant portion of people who preferred the bigger screen and the large wheel, as well as more storage from the original, and so Apple would continue to make the classic design. Until 2005, most upgrades were incremental, with some redesigns and improvements like more storage, the 30-pin charging port, a click wheel that registered touch instead of it being physically scrolled, and eventually a color screen. The iPod 5th generation took all of this and put it in the best package that had yet been seen when it came out to the October of 2005, shortly after the introduction of the first iPod Nano. The 5th gen iPod was also known as the iPod Video, as it for the first time was able to play, you guessed it, video. You could download TV shows and movies from the iTunes store or import your own files to the iPod. Of course, all this could be added by syncing with iTunes on your computer. There are actually two versions of this iPod, the iPod 5 and the 5.5. You heard me right, 5.5. That's kind of just the name people have given it, but it was an enhanced fifth generation iPod that was released a year later and brought a brighter display, a search feature, and the first 80 gigabyte hard drive. There was also a YouTube special edition of the iPod, which was pretty cool. The main reason for the continued popularity, even to this day, specifically for this iPod, is the sound quality. It has the Wolfson DAC, which is the last Wolfson chip in the iPods, as the sixth generation moved on from it. Uh, I'm not much of an audio guy myself, but enthusiasts swear by it. Beyond the sound quality, another reason for the popularity of specifically this model is the ease of upgradability. The shell is plastic, which doesn't look as nice as the sixth gen iPod, but it's easier to get open and work on. For years, people have installed faster and bigger storage, significantly larger batteries, and custom shells, and that is exactly what we'll be doing today. And thanks to that audio fidelity, once upgraded, our iPod will basically be the ultimate iPod, and uh, that's pretty darn exciting. So with that little bit of background out of the way, let's go ahead and put together our very own iPod 5th gen with all the parts sent to me by Elite Obsolete Electronics, whose website and YouTube channel I'll link in the description. He's actually super close to a thousand subscribers, so let's try to get them there. Before we get started, what we'll be putting in here is a 3000 milliamp hour battery, 128 gigabytes of flash storage, and uh, that's about it for the custom parts. The rest of it will be stock, except, you know, the shell is going to be blue. The process here is fairly simple, but it's also not for the weak of heart. There's a lot of small pieces, and it's easy to end up breaking something, even if you're careful. That being said, it's a lot of fun, and if you have a little bit of money to spend and some time to find a new hobby, this is a good way to do it. So first things first, here we have the logic board and the midframe. The midframe is metal and uh, what we'll be doing is sticking the logic board onto it with some adhesive and that'll kind of hold the whole thing together. And so as you can see here, it kind of just clicks in almost. There's no screws or anything. You just got to line up kind of the dock and from there it just kind of sits there. And then we need to attach the LCD. So this process is fairly simple. The LCD fits in pretty simply with it sliding into the midframe and this ribbon cable here needs to be attached to the logic board. Take the ribbon cable, slide it into the connector here on the board, which is a very fine process, uh, kind of annoying to do, but it's also not that difficult. Once you do that, kind of flatten it, flip down the black tab, and once we do that, it is connected and about good to go. So right here, we have the LCD and the logic board already together in the midframe. Pretty darn simple. This is what it looks like from the front right now. It's already, quite frankly, kind of cool looking. <laughs> that logic board really is, it's, it's the brain of the entire iPod, and this is when I realized I was stupid. So you actually need to plug in the click wheel before you put the logic board onto the midframe. I don't know how I missed this. So I had to take the logic board off of the midframe and then attach the click wheel to it. And that's pretty simple to do. There's a little ribbon connector right there. And once that's done, we put it back together with the logic board, midframe, and LCD. And then we connect again the ribbon cable. From here, we get to attach the front plate on. Everything's starting to look about right. So with the front plate, we need to screw it onto the midframe. It's metal and plastic. The holes all line up. Up, the tabs all line up, it kind of clicks in, and then you just use the screws and get it all set up. And once that's done, we have a front of an iPod. Oh, and I should also mention I took the screen protector off of the LCD, or the little bit of plastic, but yeah, I mean, this looks great. But obviously, we're not done yet. I mean, there's nothing on the back. So next, we need to put that iFlash storage in. Here, I have an iFlash quad adapter. It takes four SD cards and combines them to make one storage device, and it plugs into this ribbon cable here, which is where you would normally plug in the 
old hard drives. Now those old hard drives are extremely slow, so this is a much better solution. And here I have a total of four 32 gigabyte SD cards, so we'll get a total of 128 gigs, which is more than enough space for what we need, and the performance is going to be significantly better than it ever could have been beforehand. And so with the storage connected, we only have two more cables to plug in, and that's going to be for the hold switch slash headphone jack, and then for the battery. So on the back, we have the headphone jack and hold switch already screwed in. You screw it in, and then this cable comes out here, and of course plugs into the logic board. So once you get to this point, you want to be careful because everything's a little bit floppy, but you can see already how it's going to kind of fold up, and you can also see a test battery I have there. And uh, right under it, you can see the little piece of foam that I forgot to mention before. That's there just to kind of have some separation between the drive and the battery once we put it all together. But anyways, with the test battery, we can officially try to turn this on. Everything's connected and uh, it's lighting up. It's actually working. I was, I'm not going to lie. I was a little surprised I got this thing to work right away. I was half expecting everything to go wrong. But uh, yeah, no, right off the bat here, we're working. We have display and it's telling us we need to connect it to the computer because, you know, it's not formatted and that's totally fine. Uh, with it working, all we need to do now is put in the new battery and then close it up. And so let's do just that. So we kind of just put the battery into place. It kind of just sits there. Uh, it's fairly simple. I did have to disconnect the headphone jack and stuff just for now. Then we put this little yellow tape on top of the SD cards. This is just to uh, kind of hold them in place a little bit better so they don't, you know, slide out. Maybe if you dropped it or something, they shouldn't just shake out. I also put a little bit of tape kind of holding down the cables here. And you can see, you know, all the switches are working. The hold switch is working and the headphone jack is there. And so it's time to plug these things in. So we start with that headphone jack and hold button. And then we need to put that battery back on. Obviously, my, my you can see my thought process as we go through this because I wasn't really sure what I was doing uh, half the time. So I kind of, you know, kept pulling things away and putting them back and stuff. Uh, but with the battery, it's very easy to do. You just kind of slide it into this little connector in the corner uh, and it, you just kind of push it in there and it just kind of stays. And then with the battery, you kind of just let it sit on top of that foam piece. It's not going to be going anywhere. Once we put the back on, it's going to be pretty solid in there. So all we have to do is kind of fold the back over and start clicking it in. It just clicks in the tabs all work together and it just kind of sat very satisfyingly by the way clicks together uh it is a little nerve-wracking pushing this thing together it turned on on me while i was doing it because you know i hit the buttons by accident and once we do that we have the ipod that's it it's all in one piece and it's working it's great you can see it here it looks good we flip it over it looks good from the back we have an ipod now it's awesome this was from parts we just built an ipod isn't that cool and the blue oh my gosh i love the blue oh it's so gorgeous i, I wish uh, Apple had done some actual colors themselves back in the day with uh, these more classic iPods, but uh, it's still pretty cool to you use custom backs like this. Really cool parts Austin sent me. All we have to do now is sync it to the computer, put some music on it, and uh, make sure everything works. You do all this through iTunes, which I won't show. Most of you probably have done something similar before, but all you have to do is restore it through iTunes, and then right away you can sync music to it, which I did. I just uh, one album from home, which is an artist I use quite a bit in my videos. And then I disconnect the iPod from the computer and we have the setup menu you just choose your language and so on so we can go through that and here we've got the fully blue beautiful iPod 5.5 it's absolutely gorgeous and I gotta say whoever wins the giveaway is getting a pretty sweet specimen here the easiest way to show this is indeed an enhanced iPod is by going to music scrolling to the bottom and there we have the search feature something only the 5.5s have this makes this the absolute ultimate iPod classic to many of the collectors out there the superior audio quality with the the Wolfson DAC makes this the best iPod for audiophiles, something I most definitely am not, although listening to music on here is still very enjoyable. Personally, I do prefer the design of aluminum iPods, such as this iPod Classic, that uh, maybe I'll do another video restoring, we'll see. But there's no question that this thing is way easier to work on, and the plastic has a certain charm to it. Definitely makes it feel more vintage. Turning to eBay.com and looking for this iPod, it's immediately clear that there's still some real value to collectors in the community, with iPods going for well over $100 despite being a decade and a half old. The enhanced version goes for a little bit more, generally speaking, due to its improvements. And why exactly is the 5.5 better and so sought after? For starters, there is a common misconception that the audio quality is better than the regular 5th gen, but as far as I understand, this isn't actually true. There's no evidence the audio fidelity is any different from the first iPod 5, even if it does have a newer revision of the Wolfson audio chip. So basically, whether you have the 5 or the enhanced iPod, audio quality is still going to be fantastic. But where things do get better is 
is with the display for one thing. The enhanced iPod has a significantly brighter and more vibrant LCD screen compared to the previous year, and it was a huge upgrade. Don't forget we're talking 2006, a time where small LCD tech like this was still very limited. iPods had only within the last couple years gotten color screens to begin with, and the display here might look kind of bad by today's standards, but for the time it was cutting edge technology. And to be honest, even now playing a little bit of uh, Brick Breaker on it, it looks pretty good. The colors are uh, quite vibrant and it looks nice. The Samsung SoC was also revised, making the device more powerful and allowing Apple to add the search functionality that had never been there before. This might seem like a painfully simple addition, but the previous 5th gen couldn't reliably search without things slowing down more than Apple liked, and even the enhanced iPod can still be slow when searching through a large library. It doesn't have to do with storage so much as the CPU, it just puts a large load on it, and so that newer revision of the chip was a great benefit with the iPod 5.5. The maximum hard drive capacity was increased from 60 to 80 gigabytes in the models being sold, which is about as interesting as it sounds. The lower model stayed at 30 gigs, which has a thinner shell due to the drive being smaller, whereas the thicker 60 gig model from 2005 actually used a dual platter drive that was essentially made up of just two 30 gigabyte hard drives attached together, making the device need more space in the back. That iPod was quite thick. The blue iPod I have here does use the thin shell. The 80 gig model also used a dual platter drive with 40 gigs instead of 30, and again it had that thick back. It's pretty interesting the get arounds they used for old storage limitations, and it's amazing we can have two terabytes nowadays on the size of like a micro SD card. And more than that, you know, storage technology has come so far. You saw earlier I put in an iFlash quad SD card adapter that held four micro SD cards, and some of you may have wondered why I didn't just put in an SSD. After all, aren't they faster and just all in all the superior tech? Well, yeah, they are the superior tech, and yeah, they're faster. However, the iPod 5th gen is old and limited by USB 2.0. It severely bottlenecks the performance from an SSD drive. Even if SSDs can be a little bit faster than the SD cards, although the iFlash adapters do a very good job, the power consumption is going to be higher, which means lesser battery life, and SSDs are typically more expensive to begin with, making it just not really a worthwhile endeavor compared to micro SD. Both options, however, are much, much faster than the original old hard drives, and this is the first upgrade people will make to these old things besides maybe a battery swap. Compared to the old ones, it speeds things up so massively, if you have more than a few songs on an old iPod, it will chug when you're going through the library. At the end of the day, what we have here is about the best an iPod can get in the eyes of many enthusiasts. The fantastic audio fidelity, the speeds and storage size potential of micro SDs, the bigger and longer lasting battery, and of course the enhancements with the vibrant display and search functionality. This might just be the ultimate iPod classic, and while many might still prefer the aluminum from a design standpoint, including myself, there's no denying the practicality of this device, as well as just how special it feels. I'll say it, it's cool. It's cool to use. The click wheel is awesome. The nostalgia vibes are off the charts using this thing, and it might be worth it just for that. And with that, I think I'm right about done here. Huge thanks to Austin from Elite Obsolete Electronics. This video was a ton of fun to do, and Austin sells some really cool iPod stuff, so if you're interested in that, definitely go check out his website. Link, of course, in the description, as well as his social pages. And uh, if you are watching this within the first two weeks of it going live, you are eligible to enter the giveaway for one of two iPods. Uh, you can get the blue one from the Discord server, and on Twitter, you can enter for a custom iPod. That'll be the color of the winner's choice. Again, for the millionth time, links all in the description, and uh, make sure you enter both to double your odds. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.